Kai and First Star are proud to present this report, which provides details about how state and federal policy leaves many foster children without a financial leg to stand on. There are two issues outlined in this report. The first details how states regularly intercept social security, survivor and disability benefits that foster children are eligible to receive. States believe they are entitled to this money to reimburse themselves for the cost of providing foster care services to these children. The second issue relates to the increased incidence of identity theft of foster children as their social security numbers pass through the hands of numerous agencies and individuals throughout their time in the system. Foster children are thus left exposed to identity thieves. Our report clearly demonstrates how the system fails our most vulnerable children. The damage that these children suffer by having no assets after foster care ends up costing society substantially more than the confiscation of their small funds in the first place. This is a, uh, an issue that should serve as an eye-opener uh, and a real call to action that we need to do more on to, to protect uh, the foster youth that are, that are in our system, that are under our, under our care. I think as a society we have an obligation to do that. When we take Social Security money from children, we are literally setting them up for homelessness. Taking this money is not, it's not like they're going to have to drive a Camry instead of an Audi. This is literally the difference between them being able to have a home, a roof over their head, clothes on their back, food in their bellies, so they can get up and go to school and go to work and be the amazing, young, bright, energetic kids that we want them to be. That's what we're talking about today. After I left foster care, I've never stopped struggling. It's been hard to find work that I can do, and I've been living place to place, sometimes with family or friends. I never had any idea that my dad left money for me. The state never told me he left me survivor benefits. I didn't find out until I was already out of foster care. That was in 2006. That money could have changed my life. I could have had it to help learn a trade, learn how to run a business, buy things I needed for my trade. My life would be totally different than it is now. And it would have been really important to me to know that my dad was able to leave me something. That's why I'm trying to get my money back now, to help me get back on track, start making a better life for myself. And I also want to be sure that Maryland and other states stop taking money from other foster children as well. So, the Maryland Foster Care Agency secretly took the only asset left to an orphaned foster child by his deceased father. There's no other way to describe it. Alex's father worked, paid into the system, earned the right to leave survivor benefits to his child, a financial connection, connection to Alex's father that would have been invaluable to Alex, emotionally and practically when his father died. And Alex never knew his father left him with an entitlement to survivor benefits because the foster care agency never told him. The agency never told Alex to apply for his benefits, never told him it was routing the money into state revenue rather than actually using it to help him. This should not be a, a partisan issue at all. Uh, this is a bipartisan issue if there ever was one. This is a family values test. I like to imagine if this were veterans we were talking about. Can you imagine the, uh, the, the state applying for benefits for veterans and then taking the money and never informing the veteran? This happens because children are, are vulnerable and powerless. I was put in foster care when I was eight years old. I emancipated from the California foster care system when I was 18. My biggest goal in that 10 year span was to get to college, and I made it. Um, I'm in my third year. Yeah. 
it was just frustrating and upsetting because being in care for 10 years and seven homes, I didn't know where I was going to live. I didn't know if there was going to be a roof over my head from one point to another, and now I find myself in the same situation. And it's just upsetting because I work so hard to secure my future, to make sure that I have a place to stay. And because of this identity theft issue that happened while I was in care, I find myself in that same situation. Luckily, the bills that we're talking about that I'm going to summarize that help to address these issues are not expensive. In fact, one is completely revenue neutral, and the other requires really just a, a, a peanut or two to pay for. Thank you all for being here, and uh, let's work to see that the young people like this gentleman over here who age out of foster care and into adulthood uh, have their nest egg, as it were, so they can get started. Maybe it's to buy a car. Maybe it's to rent an apartment. Maybe it's to go back to graduate school or to junior college to uh, get some more skills. But in any event, uh, being destitute till they're 18 uh, doesn't, it should change, and they should have this nest egg to begin with. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you all.